So the steps to setting up a soil steamer are, very first thing is really good bed prep. So having the soil exactly as you want it for planting or direct seeding after you're done steaming, you don't want to disturb it afterwards. Second step is to water it well, uh, you know, as you would basically water for typical irrigation is about right. So not too wet, not too dry. And it, if you conceptualize it, you're trying to get blowing steam, hoping it goes down into the soil and then moves through the soil profile efficiently. So a too dry or too wet soil won't transfer the water in the heat efficiently. Step number three, I guess, <laughs> I'm gonna lose track of my steps, is to lay down the steam delivery hoses or socks as they're called. So you evenly spread those on the soil surface. And then the next step is to put a tarp either a used piece of greenhouse plastic or this scrim fabric, which is a more durable, Duraskrim I think is one of the trade names for it, on top of the steam socks and spread that out evenly for the area you want to steam. We're doing about a thousand square feet. I think sometimes less is a little more efficient. And then the next step is to weight down the sides very well, very evenly. We're using chain for that. Um, you could probably use lay flat drip line filled with water, but it has to be quite heavy. Any leakage out the sides is not good. Uh, Bruce uh, Piccadilly Farm coached us on walking on the chain afterwards, so you're really pressing it into the soil. And then the next step is connecting those socks to the steam delivery hoses off of the steamer, so the um, threading the coupling on, and then also coupling it to the, the steam delivery hoses to the steamer. You want to make sure you have plenty of diesel or whatever fuel you're using in the steamer. This one's nice because it has a 65 gallon tank. So it was delivered to us full. We, you have to fill the tank with water to have enough water supply in there. We have a pretty low pressure system here. So we try to fill it up pretty well before we get going because otherwise it'll cut out. If the water level gets too low, it cuts out. And then just checking to make sure this steamer especially wants to be pretty level. And I think that's it for prep. And then we fire it up, which on this, you know, you just plug it into a regular, what was it, 110? Switch it on. I've been closing the delivery, the output hoses, so that they build up a little pressure ahead of time. And then when it's around five PSI, opening them up about four cranks, goes and try to run it around three PSI for steam delivery. And then I, hover for a while, make sure everything's good, and then I start checking temperatures after about 45 minutes of running. And ideally, we're done in an hour and a half. Sometimes it takes a little longer. We're aiming for 160 degrees, which I think is the place a lot of farmers are coming to in terms of like an effective steam temperature, two inches down into the soil. And the other cool use of it, which we haven't done yet, but you can sterilize like potting, you know, trays, pots, I, during COVID, actually, this, the company, Sue, that makes this on their website, they were advertising steam cleaners for like park benches and playground equipment when everyone was worrying about COVID spreading on surfaces. So it's a great chemical alternative to sterilizing things.